I'm Mike Hanewald, field agronomist with Bex Hybrids, and wanted to share some information today uh, looking at nitrogen applications, but on soybeans, of all things, something that we don't normally think about. And we, you know, we all think about applying nitrogen to corn and what a critical management practice that is. But in soybeans, we've had some interesting PFR data um, from our practical farm research programs that I wanted to share with you today um, because it, it was really not what we expected to find, um, but I think uh, very intriguing and, and might spur some thoughts or ideas as you look for ideas of things to try differently next year. So first, we know, thinking about nitrogen on beans in general. So you look at this picture here that you see on the screen, and that's the soybean nitrogen uptake curve. You've probably seen something like this um, with corn, and you can see that soybeans look very similar. But I've got highlighted there that red arrow shows you the start of nodulation. Um, so that's when the soybeans form the nodules that starts at V2 under ideal conditions. If the beans are stressed, it could take a little longer. But at V2, that's when those nodules form and start actively fixing nitrogen from the air and converting it into a usable form that that plant can have. But if you notice, that bean plant still needs nitrogen before that point, almost 20 pounds of N um, that's needed by that soybean crop. And so where does that come from if we don't have the nodules fixing nitrogen? That has to come from the soil. And soybeans are excellent scavengers and they'll find it. But if those bean plants encounter any early season stress or challenges, it might be a little bit more difficult to, to see that. Now, the big concern whenever we're putting nitrogen on beans is are we going to make the nodules lazy? And so are we going to reduce the nodulation? Because if the beans feel like they have all the nitrogen that they need, um, their tendency would be to produce fewer nodules. So we monitored this as we uh, looked, about, uh, looked at this, this data over the past year at our PFR sites. And you can see three of the PFR sites where we tested it. They dug up the roots um, at, at that V2 stage when we would expect nodules to be fixing nitrogen. And you can see that from between 90 and 100% were. And there was not much of a reduction at all with all of our treatments. UAN, straight 28, we looked at thiosol and we looked at potassium thiosulfate, KTS. And you can see not a big impact on nodulation, which is certainly a good sign. Now, it's interesting when you look at our results compared between different sites. And I'm specifically going to highlight here Ohio and Minnesota. Um, <clears throat> obviously, you can see a dramatic difference. Ohio had a really good positive payback. Minnesota, it didn't really work up there. But I want to highlight the organic matter. And you look at those organic matter numbers and you'll see that in Minnesota, it's more the prairie soils, deep topsoil, um, really a lot of loam in, in there, so higher productive soils. Where in Ohio, we deal with a lot of tough clays at our PFR site, which is very similar to a majority of the state of Ohio with much lower organic matter. Organic matter is an, a major source of nitrogen, especially early on when those beans are needing to scavenge and find nitrogen. So the bacterial life and the microbes in the soil will mineralize that organic matter and supply nitrogen that could be available to the plant. And at a lower organic matter level like we have in Ohio, we saw a bigger response to supplementing that nitrogen by applying starter fertilizer with the planter. And so we actually have two new PFR proven um, practices to introduce here on soybeans. And that is 30 units of UAN 28, so that's um, 10 gallons of 28 applied in a two by two by two band. So two inches over, two inches below the surface of the soil and on both sides of the row. And then we also applied two gallons of thiosol in that same two by two by two band. And we are seeing that positive return on investment for three years at multiple location, which earns that PFR proven status. Now, we know that when it comes to these two by two by two systems, they can be very expensive to put on a planter. And in corn, it's usually um, not, a, not even a question at, at the return on investment. We've seen very positive numbers in, in PFR um, over, over quite a few years. And so um, it's, it's something that we consider. But when you look at soybeans, a lot of us plant soybeans in 15 inch rows. And so now you have twice as many rows that you need to look at putting these systems on, and that can be very, very expensive. And so um, we added a new study this year. So this is just one year of data, but we're looking at a less expensive way to apply nitrogen to the crop rather than having that two by two by two system with blades or knives to inject it below the soil. We're looking at a dribble system that just dribbles on the surface. And so in this particular study, we had four different treatments. So we had two by two just on one side of the row two by two by two on both sides of the row. In both cases, those treatments were both below the surface. And then we looked at dribbling on one side of the row versus dribbling on both sides of the row. And so you can see the results there on your screen. And you can see our biggest payback was two by two by two on both sides of the row under the ground. That's what we would expect to have the biggest payback. But dribbling on the surface was not very far behind that. And when it comes at a significantly lower cost, <clears throat> that might be the better way to go. Um, now, it is interesting that the single dribble 
had um, a much higher, almost double the yield gain of the dual dribble on both sides. And that's not what we would expect to see. However, um, our thought there is because we were fairly dry after the soybeans were planted and after that application was made, the single dribble had a higher concentration of fertilizer in one band. And so likely uh, there was less fertilizer lost due to the dry weather that we had after planting compared to the dual dribble where it was spread out and more exposed um, <clears throat> to potential for volatilization. So only one year of data on this. We're going to continue to monitor it over the coming years, but very interesting results. Also, you can see here um, there was a, a distinct visual difference um, in these trials as well this year. And so just highlighting the control with no fertilizer versus just that single dribble. And you can see a larger bean plant, a darker green bean plant, bean plant and more, more robust as well. So this might not be for everyone, but just something that we found very intriguing. We did not expect to see results like these, but uh, we wanted to share them because we thought that they were certainly interesting and something that you may want to consider. If you have any questions about this or any other agronomic topic or any of our other practical farm research information, feel free to reach out to myself or your local BEX representative.